Hello everyone, welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Titan and the three subclass builds that I like to use and why I like to use them. In this video, we will also be going over exotic armor pairings to accentuate our subclasses, and I will tell you which I, or which perks of my subclasses that I use in different situations. I also want to note that this is not PvP. We are not talking Crucible at all in this video. This is only PvE. PvE, guys. That being said, another thing that I want to get out of the way, because I know you guys will ask me in the comments, because this shader looks awesome, this is the blacksmith shader that I'm currently wearing. So uh, we can go ahead and get that away, get that out of the way. Every one of my videos that I post, somebody always asks me about the shader. Just want to clear that up. Uh, we're going to start with Defender, and then we will move on to Sunbreaker, and finally Striker. If you would like to skip to one of these two, I will put the start times of when I start talking about them down in the description of this video so that you can jump right to it. So, getting started with Defender. Now, we're going to start with my builds for raids, nightfalls, in-game type activities that uh, are pretty tough to beat, okay? So, uh, real quick, Ward of Dawn in the raid and the nightfalls, I'm either using Glass House or I'm using Helm of Saint-14. This one, Blessing of Light and Weapons of Light, lasts longer. It gives you like an extra 10 to 15 seconds on those buffs. And Helm of Saint-14 blinds enemies that walk into your bubble. Both of these are very good for the raid, for the nightfall. Actually, in the raid, this is the one that I use more now. I actually prefer Glass House in the raid. And uh, I'll tell you why as we go on here. So, kicking it off with the Defender subclass, this is how I build it. Uh, looking down here, we see that we have Illuminated. Increase the benefits granted by Blessing of Light and Weapons of Light. Now, this one is the one that I use in the raid and the nightfall. However... And, or I'm sorry, this is the one that I use in the raid. However, if I'm using a Nightfall, I will use Untouchable. Reduces the cooldown time of Ward of Dawn. We put this on, and we can see that our Tier 5 cooldown is 3 minutes and 40 seconds, versus another super without Untouchable that reduces the cooldown time. It would be 4 minutes. So you're saving 20 seconds on your super cooldown time by using Untouchable. As I said, though, in the raid, I do use Illuminated. Everything else, I will use Untouchable just so I can get my bubble faster. But typically, when I do the raid, there's at least two hunters using Light of the Pack that generate tons of orbs, so this isn't really necessary. As far as your Strength, Agility, and Recovery, or Armor, Agility, and Recovery, uh, I look at the Titan as being a tank. Therefore, I try to max out his Armor first and his Recovery second, and I don't give two shits about Agility. So moving on to this one, we have Bastion, increase the duration of Ward of Dawn. Now again, this is what I'm going to use when I'm in the raid, because the bubble lasts longer, you get to use your Blessing of Light and your Weapons of Light longer. You pair that with the Glass House, and you just have a really good class for doing the raid. I also keep this on for stuff like Nightfalls. The only time, in fact, that I actually change this up is going to be when I'm doing Challenge of Elders. When I'm doing Challenge of Elders, I will put on Gift of the Void. As Ward of Dawn takes damage from enemy fire, it creates additional orbs. In Challenge of Elders, orbs equal points. You want to put this on if you're going into the Challenge of Elders. Uh, if you can get this set up right, you can set in it and let one of the enemies, like one of the bosses, just blast you while you're standing inside of it. And your Ward of Dawn actually makes like, I, I want to say eight orbs, but don't hold me to that. It does really good though. Uh, this one right here, Relentless, increase the strength and duration of Force Barrier. I don't look at this subclass as being something that you want to maximize your melee or your grenades. I feel like this is a super subclass, uh, being that it's a defender subclass. So that being said, I don't focus on melee or grenade. I like to make sure that my bubble is as good as it's going to get. Um, so moving on to the melee that I use. Now again, I don't build this class for a good melee. But being as that it is a defender subclass, uh, it's, it's all stuff that's going to keep you alive. So that being said, I like to use War Machine. War Machine gives you a little bit of a overshield and also increases your reload speed and your agility just a little bitty bit. And uh, I mean, it's, it's really good. This has saved me a lot of times. The only thing that I don't like about this is you actually have to kill an enemy in order to trigger Force Barrier. Whereas, say something like Flame Shield on the Warlock... Uh, all you have to do is damage an enemy. Uh, you can also use, if you do want to use War Machine here, you can also use um, the Titan Exotic... What are they? I forget. <laughs> no backup plans. No backup plans. That's what it is. Uh, no backup plans. If you do want to build this for something like a Heroic Strike or something like that where you're not going to focus heavily on your bubble, this would be a solid option. Um, 
it's really more of a PvP option than a PvE option, but, you know, whatever. It's to each his own. Uh, moving on to the actual Ward of Dawn, uh, I do change this from time to time. Armor of Light, if I'm going to stand at an enemy's legs and hit them with a solar sword, I will put Armor of Light on. If I'm not doing that, however, I will put Blessing of Light and Weapons of Light. The reason being, this does give you a hell of a lot of health. You can survive a lot of shit. But if you step out of that bubble, you are taking nothing with you. With Blessing of Light, you step out of that bubble and you have an overshield. With Weapons of Light, you step out of that bubble doing more damage. So I like to run these two uh, in the raids or especially. I, that's all I use is one of these two. Uh, typically, we have two Titans in the raid. One of us will run Blessing, one of us will run Weapons, and uh, we just kind of swap back and forth. But Armor of Light, it's, it's very situational. So like I said, I use these two because this is when I step out of the bubble, I have something to carry me, or I have something to, you know, give me some benefits. As far as jump, it doesn't really matter. I prefer increased control because you get a little bit extra distance on your jump as opposed to, say, something like height. You just have, like, a really high arc, and then you come back down. This one, you can travel a little bit more ground, and you still go up pretty high, so the difference is negligible. This is the one that I do not use. I think that this is a waste. This kind of reminds me of, like, one hunter jump, which isn't very good by itself. You know, you use the hunter with double and triple jump. So, uh, this is what I prefer. Uh, grenades, the grenades for the Defender Titan are pretty crappy, if I'm being honest. Uh, the spike grenade is probably the best for bosses. If you have a boss that just stands there, you can land it right at his feet, and the entire duration of the grenade you're doing damage, then uh, this is definitely the way to go. But And suppressor grenades I never use, personally, I don't like them. But for every other enemy, like majors and stuff like that, I would say magnetic grenades are probably the best. So uh, taking a look at our exotic pairings, again for this class, um, the reason that I use them, if I'm doing something where a lot of low-level enemies are going to be running into my bubble, hands down I'm using Helm of Saint 14. If I'm doing something where low-level enemies are not going to be in my bubble, then I'm going to use the Glass House. This is my Raid Helmet, this is my Everything Else Helmet. Raid Strikes, Raid Strikes, Raids, Nightfalls, Raid Strikes. You get the idea. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Sunbreaker class. Now the Sunbreaker class, as I said at the beginning of this video, if it's something like Solar Burn, on a Nightfall, I might use this, but chances are I'm probably still going to use the Ward of Dawn, depending on who I'm playing with. If I'm playing with a solid team, then I'll you know switch over to this for Solar Burn. But I mainly only use this in stuff like Challenge of Elders. Um, I will use Sunbreaker in just regular Heroic Strikes, Legacy Strikes, stuff like that. Uh, also, if I'm running around a patrol, I'll throw this on just because it's fun. But if I'm doing any in-game activities, stuff that's actually pretty difficult, I'm sticking with Defender. So, taking a look at the Sunbreaker, there is only one exotic that actually is made for the Sunbreaker class, and that is Immolation Fists, and these grant Explosive Pyre. So, when I put on Sunbreaker, I'm going to use Immolation Fist. If I'm not using Immolation's Fist, then I am going to use the Armamentarium. The reason why I'm going to use Armamentarium is it gives you two grenades, and the Fusion Grenade is actually pretty good. Uh, this is the same type of grenade that the Warlock has, and having two of these can be pretty fun if you do it right. So uh, looking over here, we have Simmering Flames. Simmering Flames. When super energy is full, grenade and melee abilities recharge twice as fast. Now when you have max or uh, discipline, like I have here, when you're tier 5 and all it takes is 25 seconds for you to get a grenade, you pair that with Armamentarium and you get two grenades, you're basically getting a grenade every 12 seconds when your super is full. And that is so much fun, guys. Uh, for a Titan, if you have Challenge of Elders and it is grenade bonus or melee bonus, this is your way to go. This is it, right here. Simmering Flames is the way to go. So another thing that you can do is cauterize. Enemies brought down fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just had another brain fart. I don't know why, but when I put it on the spot like this, and I gotta read this shit off my TV as I'm talking, I just, I panic. I get really nervous. But anyway, enemies brought down by your fire regenerate your health. This is a good option for stuff like exposure in Challenge of Elders. And lastly, we have Firekeeper. While standing in a sunspot, you gain an overshield. So this is a pretty good option if it's something like um, uh, super, super bonus. This is a good one to have because your Hammer of Soul will last longer when you pop your super if you stand in a sunspot. But for the most part, I use Simmering Flames. Like I said, these are situational. I will use Cauterize if Exposure is on, and I will use Firekeeper if it is super bonus and Challenge of Elders. But like, 
like I said, for the most part, I'm going for those grenades and melees on this one. Uh, again, doesn't really matter, not going to talk about it. Uh, over here we have Flame Seeker. Your Hammer of Soul will alter its flight path to seek out your enemies. This is the one that I prefer, but there are other options here that are really good. For example, Explosive Pyre. I love Explosive Pyre, it is so much fun to use, but we have an exotic that will do it for us. Remember, Immolation Fists. So if you have this equipped, then there's no need for you to select it. And that's why I actually don't have this selected. And lastly, we have Fleet Fire. Enemies felled by your fire grant you bonus agility. I don't care about that. I don't care about that at all. It's going to be one of these two. Now, like I said earlier, when I put on my Sunbreaker class, I'm going to put on Immolation Fist. So that's why I don't have this selected. Uh, this uh, allows me to have Flame Seeker and, Immolation, er, and Explosive Pyre by using that exotic. So... If you do not have that exotic, honestly, I would recommend Explosive Pyre. It does really good damage to your enemies. But if you do have Emulation Fists, throw them on and run Flame Seeker. Again, doesn't matter, I don't care. <laughs> Moving on to uh, Sunstrike here, this is your melee. Me personally, I think that this is really the only option, guys. Stoke the Forge. Reduce Sunstrike cooldown, getting a killing blow with Sunstrike instantly recharges it. Now what this means is if you melee an enemy and they die from that one hit, then you automatically get your melee back. Now if it's melee bonus in the Challenge of Elders, guys, this is it. This is it right here. All you gotta do is like, if they're not a one hit melee, just put one or two scout rifle shots into their leg or something, and then go up and melee them. This is what I use. That being said, Thermal Vent is pretty good. Uh, Sunstrike releases a solar explosion on hit, kills create a sunspot that damages enemies inside. Maybe you can pair that with uh, with Firekeeper? Maybe you can do that? I'm not sure. I actually haven't tested that, and I actually didn't think about it until just now. So, <laughs> Melting Point. Uh, burn away your target's defense while turning targets are weakened, or while burning targets are weakened. I'm telling you, I get nervous when I have to read. To both you and your allies. This doesn't really matter to me, because it's pretty much what this does anyway. So, I prefer Stoke the Forge. Moving on to the actual hammers, I typically use Forge Master. Throw more, throw more hammers and create bigger explosions. I mean, that's that's why we like hammers, right? So that's what I stick with here. Uh, sun Charge, I don't like that. I don't like to hurtle myself forward. And Scorched Earth, uh, Ignite the World, creating sunspots everywhere you land. If you're going to use this one, I will put that on. So Fire Keeper pairs with Scorched Earth. This kind of goes with anything. So that's why I use that. And we already talked about how I prefer fusion grenades, but we will look at the other options. Thermite Grenade is good in situations, um, stuff like uh, a bunch of really low-level enemies, you can do that, and uh, this this would be pretty good. And uh, Incendiary Grenade, same thing as earlier, I mean, it, it's, it's underwhelming, I don't care for it. So Fusion Grenade is going to be my option there. And as far as the other exotics that I would pair with this, like I said, this is the only one that is actually made for this subclass, so it's the only one that we're going to talk about. I could go on forever about, oh, well, you can use Rune Wings, and you can use uh, Twilight Garrison, Crest of Alpha Loopy, blah, blah, blah. But since you can use those with any subclass and still get their effects, then they're not really class-specific, and I don't really care about them. So uh, moving on to the last one, we're going to talk about Striker. Now, Striker, I do not use very often at all. I'll use it occasionally in Patrol, maybe Prison of Elders, maybe in like a Legacy Strike or something like that, uh, just for fun, because it is kind of fun to use, but... You know, for the most part, you can see that this has max agility. This is the class that I switched to when I got to do a jumping puzzle on the raid. So, uh, getting into a striker, we'll look at its exotic pairings. And, I mean, I don't even have these in my inventory because I never use this class. But the best one that you're going to have that's made specifically for striker is going to be this one. That's Helm of Inmost Light. Gain Death from Above and Headstrong for your Fist of Havoc. The other option would be Eternal Warrior. Gain Unstoppable for Fist of Havoc. Now, I prefer this one if I'm going to use it because you get two perks as opposed to this one only giving you one. So that's the only reason that this one wins. They're both pretty pretty boring, honestly. But uh, I think that that's... I think that that's it. I think that's... Oh, and these two down here, the boots. Uh, increased duration of shoulder charge and tighter turn radius when you're sprinting. And airborne shoulder charge deals more damage. Both of these are really catered to PvP and not so much PvE. So we're not going to talk about these. So... Let's build our class for Helm of Inmost Light real quick. So we're going to open up our Striker. Helm of Inlo Inmost Light gives you Death from Above and, I believe, Unstoppable. Was that it? Hang on, let me look. 
Was it Death From Above and Unstoppable? I can't remember now. Death From Above and Headstrong. That's what it is. And the other one gives you Unstoppable. All right. So, when you're using Helm of Inmost Light, you can have Aftermath and Death From Above. The last one is Shockwave. This one gives you, like, a little line of electricity in front of you. I don't care for this one. I like this one. Uh, this one is really good for ad control. If you have a bunch of ads around, you can slam the ground. You're going to have that area of effect around, and the enemies won't cross it. And if they do cross it, they're going to die. So that's why I like to use this. And this one is good, and that's why I, I would pair it with something like Helm of, in, or Helm of Inmost Light. That way you get that extra little bonus. So this one's priority. Uh, this one I would only really use if you have the helmet that gives it to you for free. Uh, real quick, the grenade, we have flashbang grenade, we have lightning grenade, and we have pulse grenade. I prefer the pulse grenade. I have good results with it. Uh, a lot of times the area of effect um, is small enough to where enemies will run into it. I guess they don't, they're not programmed to avoid it like most other grenades. Uh, this one, lightning grenade, this is a good one if you can get it right underneath the boss and do continuous damage, kind of like the spike grenade for defender. And this one, I just, I just flat out don't use. Uh, looking at the melee here, we have Stormfist. Stormfist is pretty fun. Uh, you can see that we have Overload. This is the one that I use. Reduce Stormfist cooldown. You get to use it more often. Hits with Stormfist have a chance to immediately reset its cooldown. So, kind of like on the uh, Sunbreaker build, how down there at the bottom, if we got one kill, then it automatically reset it. This one has a chance to do that, and that's why I use it. Uh, so Discharge, not really anything special. This is more of a PvP thing. And Amplify, kills with Stormfist, significantly reduce the cooldown of Fist of Havoc. This one is a good one to use. If um, you have your Strength maxed out, you have a lot of... Um, or your uh, melee cooldowns as low as it can get, Amplify is definitely a good one to use because it's going to give you your Fist of Havoc more often. Uh, this doesn't matter. Moving on over here, we have Headstrong. Now remember, if with Helm of Inmost Light, you get this for free. So I like to build around that. Aftershocks, increase the duration of Pulse Grenade, Lightning Grenade, and Aftermath. These two go together. So uh, Lightning Grenade, Pulse Grenade, all that good stuff. So Aftershocks is the one that I use. If you pair it with Helm of Inmost Light, then you're getting both of these. And lastly, we have Transfusion. Kills with Storm Fist or Shoulder Charge, immediately trigger Health Regeneration. I'm not too crazy about this. I'm sticking with these two. And over here, we have Unstoppable. You are harder to kill while using Storm Fist, or Fist of Havoc. Then we have Shoulder Charge, and we have Juggernaut. I do not like either one of these because I don't like how it makes my screen look. Uh, Juggernaut could be really good in PvE. I, couldn't, I wouldn't tell you because I don't use them. Same goes for Shoulder Charge. I do not use this. I don't like how it makes my screen look, guys. I know that's a stupid reason for not using something, but that's why I don't use it. Um, the Eternal Warrior gives you Unstoppable, so if you are going to use one of these, um, and you want it Unstoppable, you can put on that exotic with it, and that is pretty much it. <laughs> That's pretty much it for the Titan, guys. Uh, these are the ways that I build my class. Um, like I said, just to recap, Defender is my number one. If I'm doing any kind of end-game activity, I'm using that Pussy Bubble, all right? Hands down, this is what I'm using, and I'm pairing it with either... Helm of Sane 14, or the Glass House. I mean, look how cool that looks. Look how awesome that is, man. And uh, just again, because I know you guys are probably going to ask me, this is my weapons. I got Black Spindle on. I got Harrowed Quillum's Terminus. I have Helm of Sane 14, Harrowed War Newman's Fists for the Gauntlets, because they look really neat. Uh, then I'm using All Spectre stuff and Mark of the Witness. You get this from uh, Challenge of Elders. Or maybe this one's just from Ranking Up Prison of Elders. I can't remember. But uh, Artifact, it's a Raid Artifact, and this is the Consume Shell. So there, now you don't have to comment down below and say, What gauntlets are those? What helmet is that? What shader is that? I'll show you the shader again, just to make sure. Blacksmith Shader, how do you get it? From pre-ordering Advanced Warfare before this game came out. That's how you get the Blacksmith Shader, or if somebody gives you a code. But anyway, guys, that's going to bring this video to an end. Drop a comment down below. Let me know how you build these three subclasses. Uh, really, if there is a striker expert out there, somebody that actually prefers to use striker, I would love to hear how you guys build it, because I'm not a striker expert. I feel like these two classes I have set up pretty well. I feel like I use these really well. But honestly, I'm a, I'm a striker novice. I'm, I'm not really experienced with it. But that's going to bring this video to an end, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I fucking love you. Keep checking back to the channel. I'm doing this for hunters, too. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.